Let's talk about phase one. Phase one is um, what I call trip training, okay? By the end of phase one, the person has learned that when someone takes him or her to the toilet, um, he, he or she pees in the toilet and is dry between trips. So you're, it's, it's on you to take him when necessary. But he's wet, he's dry, right? You're, you're further ahead than you are now, <laughs> right? He's dry, but he's not going when he needs to go. He's going when you take him. D does that make sense? Phase two is he's going when he needs to go. But first we have to get him to the point where he'll go when you take him, okay? So he doesn't yet ask to go when he needs. He doesn't stay dry in non-training settings. So if you're only training at home, he could still be wet at school because he's not being trained there and vice versa, right? Um, and you know, you're gonna teach him as part of the sequence, pulling the pants up, pulling the pants down, flushing the toilet, wiping, hand washing. You're gonna teach all those things as part of the sequence, but he may not be independent in those parts at the end of phase one. So the goal for phase one is when I take you, you go. When I take you, you go, okay? And I mean, we can all do this, right? You go to the doctor's office, Doctor says you have to pee in the cup. You think, oh my God, I've had hardly anything to drink. But you go in the bathroom and guess what? You pee in the cup, right? You can go when you have to go, even if you're, you just went, right? There's almost always a little urine in your bladder. It's interesting. So the, the really important thing about phase one is we have to figure out how often to take the person. And this requires a little bit of math. I'm sorry, I can't get around it. It requires a little bit of math. So here's, what, here's how you do the math. Um, for, we're not training yet. We're just figuring out how often to take the person. So for five to seven days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday and Sunday, in the training environment, let's assume he's only being trained at home, you wanna check the person about, he's in, he's in pull-ups, you're not training yet, he's still in pull-ups, right? right? You wanna check him about every 30 minutes to see if he or she is wet or dry. Now, if the pull-ups make it impossible for you to tell whether he or she is wet or dry, then you have to take the pull-ups off for this part too, right? If the pull-ups are so good that they, it's like you're feeling and you don't know, right? Then you gotta take the pull-ups off for this part as well, okay? If the person's dry, that's fine. That's, he's dry. Um, have a sheet, nine o'clock, write a D for dry. Check him again at 9.30. D for dry. Check him again at 10 o'clock. W for wet, change him. 10.30, D for dry. 11, D, 11.30, D, 12, D, 12.30, W, write a W, he's wet, change him. All you're doing is taking data on is he wet or dry about every 30 minutes. That's all you're doing. You're not training, you're not doing anything, you're just figuring it out. You wouldn't want to um, peak, really have a good peak in, in his pants every 30 minutes because you drive him nuts. Like if he was wearing a pull up and you had to do a, a more in depth investigation to see if he was wet or dry, you wouldn't want to do that and keep the pull up on? No, you wouldn't. I mean, uh, what, yeah, I think if you can't easily tell whether he's wet or dry and you have to like take the pants down, undo the pull up, sniff a little, right? Like this is, you know, whatever, this is too inconvenient. So then you have to take the pull up off even to get this information. Because you want to easily be able to tell is he wet or dry, right? If you can't do it every half hour, the minimum you can do is every hour. You could check him every hour. My preference is every half hour, right? All you're doing is checking. It shouldn't take more than like a few seconds, right? Uh, the child's in uh, underwear. Yeah. In the accident, you 
isn't lard, so it doesn't soil the pants. Okay. It soils the underwear only in the area that but that's cares. yeah. You can't see that unless it's pulled off. Um, is okay. So, so the question is: um, There's a little bit of wet on the underwear, sure. but not a lot. Is there ever a lot, or is it always just a little bit? It's very rare. Very rare. He probably isn't drinking enough. No, we have the water bottle going. Uh, well, but if if we have a water bottle, we have to consume through from the morning to the afternoon. So he's going right or she. So so he's letting she's letting a little bit out at a time, but never the full amount, never the full bladder. Very rare do we see a, a flood. Well, so you still need every time if you're checking and there's a little bit there, you you need. So I have to pull the yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to check then. You're gonna have to check, right? You only need to do this for a couple of days you, until you got the math done. So let me let me show you the math and maybe this will make a little bit more sense. Okay, so you're writing down wet w d w d w d w d. Okay. Now you need to calculate the average amount of time the person can stay dry. So here's what you're going to do for each day. Say we're on Monday. You're going to add up the number of hours during which you wrote down the W's and D's. So say you wrote down W's and D's from 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. That's 12 hours. Add up the number of W's, right? You can ignore the first one. If the person was wet in the morning when he got out of bed, ignore the first W. Right, or if he was wet when he got off the bus at school, ignore the first W. Add up the number of, of, of W's and divide that by the number of, uh, divide the number of hours by the number of W's. Okay, so if you've got six W's, he was wet six times in 12 hours, that means that he's wet every two hours on average. If, he, if, you, if you got six hours and six W's, he's wet about every hour. If you got six hours and two W's, he's wet about every three hours, two, six divided by two. If he's six hours every tw and 12 W's, he's wet about every half hour, every 30 minutes. Does that make sense? Like how often on average is this person wet? Okay, so you do that for every day. You do that for Monday. Do it again for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. On average, how often, okay? So here's what it looks like. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Add up all these numbers. You have 6.175 hours. We'll talk about what .175 means in a minute. 6.175 hours divided by five days, one, two, three, four, five, is 1.235 hours. What the heck does that mean? We have to convert 0.235 to minutes. 0.235 times 60 minutes is 14 minutes. So this is one hour and 14, let's call it 15, minutes. So the average dry period for this person is one hour and 15 minutes. That's how often you're going to take him to the toilet. On average, he can stay dry for an hour and 15 minutes. So you're going to take him every hour and 15 minutes, right? If he's on average dry for 30 minutes, you have to take him every 30 minutes. If he's on average dry for three hours, your ship just came in. You don't have to take him but every three hours, right? You can't guess. Right? If you don't take him often enough, he's going to be wet more than he's going to be able to pee in the toilet. If you take him too often, you're going to drive him crazy because you're trying to get him to pee when he doesn't have to pee. Right? So you have to figure this out ahead of time. Right? You have to figure it out ahead of time. Right? Did everybody kind of follow that math? I mean, it's kind of, you know, right? Now, if the person is wet, every, if, if the longest the person can stay dry is say 15 minutes, I call people who have that problem dribblers, right? It's still possible to train, but you can see that it's now gonna be a whole heck of a lot more work for you, right? Because now you've gotta take them every 15 minutes, 
right? So some of doing the math is also figuring out, okay, can I really do this, right? Like I, I, I've only worked with one school team, yeah. right, who worked, I, this was a young woman who I worked with many years ago. She was, um, you know, 19 years old in her last year of school. This was her last big shot at being toilet trained. She was a dribbler, like literally every 15 minutes. And the school staff decided, by God, she's not graduating until she's toilet trained. We're not sending her out in the world until she's trained. And that's what they did for six months. And she was trained. But I've never met a school team as dedicated as these people were. I mean, they were just adamant. She was not going to graduate until she was trained. But they dug in and they did it. So I know it's possible because I've been there, but it's tough. It's a tough go. Okay? So do the math, right? Do the math. In, in most, one of the biggest reasons that kids aren't trained at school is that they don't do the math. They go, well, we'll take him in the morning and then we'll take him after recess and then we'll take him after lunch and then we'll take him before he gets on the bus. It's, it's like, well, Really? If you're lucky, that'll work. But if most of the time, that's not either too often or not often enough. OK? So <clears throat> now we know how often. At the appropriate time, because now you know he, he's going to have to go. On average, he pees every hour and 15 minutes. So here we go. right? You take him to the toilet. You don't ask him, do you need to go to the toilet, honey? Do you need to pee Susie? You don't ask. You know that there's enough urine in his bladder, assuming that he's been drinking or she's been drinking you know, the same amount of time when you did the calculation as he or she usually does. You know that there's enough urine in the bladder and that the person probably has to go. So you take him to the toilet. You, you don't ask. You tell. Let's go to the bathroom. Time to go to the bathroom. Before, as you're on, before, before you go, have the person say bathroom or pee or toilet or go potty or whatever it is that you've decided when you were getting ready that you want him to say and or have him or her take the picture on the way to the bathroom. So that picture is never taken unless you're on the way to the bathroom, right? I mean, you're, you're literally grabbing it and as you're moving out the door. Right, right. Whether it's in a PEX book or on the wall, or you know, and if you're, if it's a manual sign on the way to the bathroom, he's making the sign. He's making the sign. Here I am. I'm on my way. I'm going. Right. Okay. So you're modeling for the person what you want him to do later on in order to self-initiate. And then once you're in the bathroom, you're going to stop talking. You are not going to talk in the bathroom. Right? You're going to stand behind the person and use hand over hand instruction to help him or her pull the pants down. Right? Your hands over his hands to help pull the pants down because you want to teach that. Right? Have the person stand, if you're into standing, <clears throat> if it's a boy, or sit on the toilet, use the special seat, whatever. Right? Now you know the person has to go because you did the math. You know there's enough urine in the bladder, right? So he needs to sit there for at least five to 10 minutes, ideally sit there till he pees. But again, we'll talk about problems with this. Ideally sit there till he pees, or for at least five to 10 minutes. If he doesn't pee within five to 10 minutes, he can get off the toilet and walk around in the bathroom a little bit, but you know he has to go. You know he has to go. So if you get him back in the classroom or he goes in the living room, you know he's going to go. Right? So walk around a little bit, back on the toilet another five or 10 minutes. Right? You know he has to go. You know he does. You did the math. Trust your math. OK? Um, if while he's off walking around in the bathroom a little bit, he starts to pee, you whip him on the toilet. Right? Like, that's why you don't want to be far from the toilet at this point, because you know he has to go. right? You're going to get him on there. And then when he's finished peeing in the toilet, not in the middle of the stream, right? because if you interrupt the stream, the, bladder, the sphincter clenches, and now he only has partially emptied his bladder. You don't want to get excited too soon. right? After, then you can 
praise, dancing bears, call Nemo, you know, food, reinforce, whatever it is that you're going to do. Oh, boy, look at that. Wow, look, oh, terrific. Oh, let's call Grandma. Let's call Nemo. Let's call the President of the United States. Let's call Stephen Harper, right? You know, whatever. <laughs> okay, so like big dog and pony show. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Right? Now, you're, not, you're never saying to him, if you pee in the toilet, you get blah, blah. If you pee in the toilet, you get blah, blah. Don't say that. Just make it happen. When he pees in the toilet, give him blah, blah. Right? But you don't want to get into the sort of coercive verbal stuff. When you, if you pee in the toilet, or you're not going to, oh, look, you peed in your pants. You're not going to get blah, blah. No, 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 no. That gets in. Now we're into power struggle land again. You don't want to get into that coercive verbal cycle, right? When he pees, reinforce him. Get excited. Oh, boy. And then when he's done, he's sitting on the toilet having his iPad. Oh, boy, this is great. And having his food, doing whatever. Now you assist him to get off. You can do, again, hand over hand to help him wipe, help him flush, help him pull up his pants, walk him in the bathroom, do hand over hand instruction around hand washing. You're going to do all that, right, because you want all those skills in place, right? You're going to have your data sheet, right, and you're going to make a nice big T for toilet, not a W. That was wet in the pants. T for he peed in the toilet. And give yourself that glass of wine, big pat on the back. OK, so that's what happens if he pees in the toilet. If he's wet in between times, right? So he's, it, you're on an hour and 15 minute schedule, but at the hour point, you know, he wets himself, right? Most of the time, you're going to change him or her into dry clothes, not ignore it, but change into dry clothes. But you're not going to talk about this, right? You're not going to say, blah, 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 blah. You shouldn't wet yourself. You should be a big girl, blah, blah, blah. Mommy's so disappointed. You're not going to get your bouncy ball now, blah, 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 blah. You're not going to say anything. You're just going to, oh, you're wet. Let's go in the bedroom. Let's change you up. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Change, change, change. We're done. So there's a huge difference between what happens when you pee in the toilet and what happens when you pee in your pants. When you pee in the toilet, all hell breaks loose, right? Happiness abounds, right? Everyone's happy. Everyone's, oh, good. Oh, this is so great. Oh, look what you get. You get all these things. When you, wet your, when you pee in your pants, hardly anything happens. You go in the bedroom, wipe, 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 change, 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 clean pants. That's it. We're done. No debriefing, no lecturing, no scolding, no nothing. No, oh, well, you didn't get, you're not going to get your bouncy ball now. Not going to get your iPad. Oh, too bad. No, can't have it. No, no, none of it. Right? Lots of verbal, no verbal. Lots, no. Got it? And now you get to make a W on your data sheet. Means, whoops. And that's when you start the next interval. So as soon as the dryness has occurred, if he's on an hour and 15 minute schedule, the hour and 15 minutes starts from the time that you change the wet clothes to the next hour and 15 minutes. Right? Does that make sense? OK. And at the end of each day, if you are you know, into it, I hope you can be into it, get yourself a piece of graph paper. and. Graph, how many wets, how many dries, and in a sh fairly short period of time, hopefully, the dries will start exceeding the wets, and you're off and running. That's the shtick with trip training, right? You're going to trip train um, till the person's dry, you know, most of the time, like 90 to 100 percent of the time, for about two weeks. <coughs> At the end of two weeks, you can consider that person trip trained, right? Don't change anything before the two weeks is up. Keep delivering the reinforcer when peeing in the toilet. Continue to be neutral about accidents. 
obviously, if the person ever asks to go between times or ever wanders into the toilet on his or her own and pees on his or her own in the toilet between times, oh my gosh, that's worth two calls to Stephen Harper, right? That's like huge celebration time, right? Because now you've hit bonanza, you've got self-initiation happening. So don't prevent the person from going in the bathroom and doing it on his, on his or her own. And if that ever happens, I mean, my gosh, right? I, um, I, work, with, I work with a school team a couple of years ago and I got a frantic call from the SEA one day saying, you know, we've been training, let's call him Johnny, and you know, he's, he's been dry for a couple weeks now, and today he, 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 he took the picture of the toilet out of his communication book, and, 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 and he didn't look at me, he just, he did this, he just like handed it to me, and I said, yeah, yeah, what'd you do, what'd you do? She said, well, I, I let him go to the bathroom even though it wasn't time, I hope that was okay. I wanted to kiss her all over her body, right? It's like, yes, yes, what happened? Did he pee? Yes. Did you get excited? Yes. I said, yes, yes, yes. But she like was afraid she had made a mistake, right? So now I make it a real point to say this isn't a mistake. This is like a fabulous thing if that happens, right? She was concerned because he hadn't given her eye contact. I'm like, really? Seriously? Right? So now we're trip trained. Right? If you're lucky, you start getting self-initiation in there too, but now, now we're trip trained. 